welcome ma'am she has been a big person now she has been the karamveer chakra awardee she has been the youth leader from india in the silver jubilee conference of waba she has also been the speaker at tedx bandra 2018 uh we also know her for most inspiring women of the year award for valuable contribution in field of healthcare she has also authored a book on bihar now she will also be talking about that i hope you all guys do have a look on uh, on that a doctor's experiment in bihar a story of an inspiring struggle to transform maternal and child healthcare so guys here we have it for dr taru jindal a uh, very warm welcome to her thank you so much ma'am Namaste. Uh, my name is Taru, and uh, thanks a lot to change the climate change. पहली बार तो मैंने जब change the climate change when I heard that uh, the name of the organization itself, I was so impressed because I think that's the the greatest calling of our generation today. And uh, thanks a lot for giving me this opportunity to present my ideas, my work in front of all of you. and i have heard that there are uh, students from the 10th standard uh, from punjab and i guess from tamil nadu uh, not sure if i have teachers uh, also in the session and in case there are teachers so my namaste to all the teachers as well uh, so students would be joining from home i guess so uh, you would be having some questions which uh, i'll take towards the end of the session so uh, you can put it uh, in your chat whatever you feel uh, you can just put it in your chat uh, i'm sorry just for, there has been an interruption yeah great so uh, i think i start so uh, on 5th june so was the world environment day and i believe i have never seen so much action and activity happening on an environment day actually i was not even aware of the environment day till this year and uh, i realized this year that uh, the amount of uh, activity even in my own life towards the environment has increased in the last few years uh, so i am here to present a few actions that i and my husband who is a psychiatrist uh, both of us have taken to uh, to be more sustainable so what is sustainable sustainable means living in a way uh, that makes your life sustainable towards the environment we are not damaging the environment we ensure that our lifestyles uh, don't uh, create a dent in the environment so that is sustainability so uh, we started our journey in in i think 2013 2013 yeah 2013 that was my last year of md and uh, these were the two documentaries that i watched so uh, an inconvenient truth was a documentary by al gore so if you i don't know you must you you all must be small at that time al gore was the vice president of united states when uh, george bush was the president so he started working a lot on the environment and he came up with this documentary an inconvenient truth uh, and it was about the impact of uh, what humans were doing on the environment and when i saw that documentary i was like sap what is this i mean before 2013 i don't think i had ever given a thought to what i was doing with regard to the impact that it had on the environment it was only after that documentary that they actually started thinking the second documentary was this the story of stuff project this beautiful documentary that you will find easy on youtube and i really recommend that you watch it uh, in this that lady just uh, goes through the entire journey of stuff the stuff that we use at home the stuff that we use at our workplaces in schools and every single stuff that we use what is the story about it from production to disposal and the entire chain it covers the entire chain and it makes us realize that we have so much stuff and there is all this stuff going and this stuff is creating so much waste beautiful two documentaries probably my first little steps into the world of sustainability uh maybe a year after that 
the first thing that came to my mind was what about the pads that girls use that we all use so these pads are made of 90% plastic even though we call them as cotton pads 90% is plastic and what happens when we just throw them in the dustbin or throw them down the toilet what happens to it? so then when i read about it i came to know that it takes more than 500 years for a single plastic pad to get completely decomposed can you even imagine this so in one day if you if you're using what four pads three to four pads an average period is of four to five days so imagine you're you're throwing 20 such pads every month in the environment which just gets uh, buried in the landfill so what is a landfill landfill is stuff that is just thrown you know maybe it's not thrown outside your house but it is the trucks will carry it like right now i'm in delhi so it will carry it carry it and it will go outside delhi find a large place and just dump it and slowly it becomes a huge landfill you so this is a landfill you can see on the left side this is the largest landfill of asia it is in Ghazipur. so the first time when i saw this landfill i thought it was a mountain i did not realize this was a pile of waste that had the the pile had just became become so big over the years that now it's a mountain and there are trucks which go above the uh, landfill to keep dumping dumping and the landfill is just becoming bigger so, not dumb 20 plastic bags into a certain bag. When I look, the moment I look, I'm switching, I'm switching from plastic bags to cotton bags. So, the issue of washing is there. So, I have to go and wash from the dorm. When I look smart using these bags, I can see there's nothing. This is a beautiful. It's very hectic. It's good for you. The pad can be used for at least three years. Three years. After that, there's nothing to decompose. In India, we have one of the two clubs, like the Swatchi Sumo. Even when I started menstruating, uh, my, the first thing that my mother gave me was a piece of cloth and slowly when we saw a lot of adver advertisements on television then we switched to uh, plastic pads but now we go back to this they are uh, it's just amazing uh, the next thing uh, then i think i stuck to just this one change in my life for a very long time of using cotton pads uh, this year, it was and I started doing a lot more things in the environment. The first started, there was a spotlight on the environment, on nature, on human beings, on impacts. Uh, sorry to interrupt, ma'am. Uh, there is some connection error probably at your end. Uh, voice is not clear. Everyone is saying. So sorry, ma'am, to interrupt. Uh, can you hear me now? I think it is better, yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. Yes, ma'am. So, Thank uh, you, ma'am. Okay, great. So, uh, I was talking about COVID. So, ever since COVID happened, the pandemic happened, this is such a spot on the environment and how the human being and the environment and what was going on. I don't think before is given for this. Now, everything you say about about uh, whether it should be vegan or it should be vegetarian or it should be vegetarian or how we are things uh, in the world so what's going on so I also started thinking why am I knowing all the time so I started doing home composting composting is something that I think of I read that almost 60 percent of waste that goes out of our house is organic waste also organic waste Media newspaper, 
aggregated so we do not aggregate it it is thrown and that it, uh, the land pit just just keeps getting bigger and bigger so uh, i am getting the text by rushika suresh uh, it's on your screen so i i getting again again the request is coming can you just can rushika suresh so uh, i started composting so there these people who are in the area not just daily there are many organizations that are making in fact you can buy your simple matkas you have seen in which you store water and just make a few holes so if you just stack up a few four or five matkas you can start composting in your house right now and maybe your parents would not know about this but you can be the one who can start this wave of change in your house so you can look at this black compost this was made in just 4 weeks and this is the first compost of my life so i put this picture i was so thrilled that i have thrown what pumpkin peels and banana peels and waste food and this and look what it has become because ultimately all of this food is what nitrogen and carbon yeah so composting you do this person to that any and so composting is the first advantage so organic and you can compost this compost in use in my house to grow a solid food i have used the these these dabbas that we get from the hotel and i have just made holes in that and then move so i have used the compost from this uh, from my own composter and put in this and now i am growing so the first step is composting and then is second is utilizing the compost the other thing is when you segregate the rest of the stuff that comes out is in organic material like newspapers papers uh, milk bags plastics so all of this can be recycled if you mix both both of them what will happen some of your curries will go in the plastic and it will all be a khichdi some mixture and it will just get dumped in that landfill and once uh if you separate them then it can get recycled it can go to the recycling uh, industry and get recycled if you don't segregate then how will it get recycled so the first thing that you have to do in your house is create two separate bins one is for organic which can go for composting and one is inorganic or dry i should not say dry and wet because a lot of stuff that i throw in the Uh, organic is also dry so it's not about dry and wet it's about you can differentiate as something that was was once living and something that was never living so plastic one side paper one side and uh, vegetables one side okay uh, what happened it's not moving right uh, the next thing as i shared these are microgreens i don't know if you ever heard of microgreens you would have heard of sprouts right your mother makes sprouts at home and you would have heard that sprouts are very nutritious you must eat sprouts so these are just elder siblings of sprouts so when you keep sprouts for a longer time they start growing okay they can even grow in water so this uh, these pictures are this is moong and this is chana this has been grown in water so i this is also microgreen which i just showed you this is also microgreen but i have grown it in compost and little bit of soil but you can also grow it in water there are many many videos available on youtube and it is such a beautiful experiment to grow something on your own this is the first time i grew, grew something and it is said that uh, the uh, microgreen is the stage of the plant up till just two leaves beyond two leaves it is not a microgreen so when you eat microgreens you can see on the right side these are microgreens so you can just cut them and eat them raw so how do you eat them maybe in sandwiches or salads or soups and it has 40 to 50% more vitamins than adult plants and that is why microgreens must be eaten uh i used my compost 
to grow a small kitchen garden in my house. Again, all of this was done during the COVID time. And uh, you can see this, these are small microgreens of palak or spinach. They are still growing. I'm not, I've not harvested them. So, uh, so uh, in Bangalore, there is an organization called as Swachha Graha. You can go to their website and this they na, administer this pledge that it's a that I will live my life in a closed loop. Closed loop means I will compost, I will use that compost to grow a kitchen garden, and I will use that kitchen garden, uh, the vegetables and fruits grown there, to cook in my kitchen. And again, I will use these fruit fields to compost. So it is a closed loop. Nothing is going out of this loop, right? No waste is being generated. And whatever waste is being generated, I'm utilizing the waste also. So this is a closed loop pledge. So I went to that website and I signed the pledge. So now I am duty bound to do this. Uh, I had just mentioned that these days, People are even questioning their food choices. Uh, in 2013, my husband, who is a psychiatrist, he became vegan. Now, I don't know whether you've heard of veganism. Veganism is a step ahead of vegetarianism. So vegetarians don't eat flesh, right? So they will not eat chicken or maybe some of them may have dairy and eggs, but they'll not go beyond that. So I also used to take dairy and I used to take eggs same for my husband. So in 2013, he read a book called Food Revolution by John Robbins. You know who is John Robbins? Okay, so you would have eaten uh, the ice cream of Baskin Robbins. Yeah, so Baskin Robbins you would have heard, right? So he is a multi-millionaire, right? Baskin Robbins. And John Robbins is his son. So he was going to inherit the entire empire. So John Robbins writes that when he was small, he used to get ice cream for breakfast. And they had a swimming pool in the shape of an ice cream. But when he realized that uh, dairy industry and the, uh, and the industry of uh, uh, creating non-vegetarian food is harmful for the environment, then he just quit all of that. He left his father's house and he went and lived inside the forest for many years. And then he wrote this book. So I insist that these days when you're free, you can read this book, Food Revolution, and think whether you want to go vegan. So I and my husband went vegan in 2013. My husband is still vegan, although I went back to dairy. So that's my bad and I'm, uh, now that I speak to you every single day, I feel, oh, I should go back to veganism. So I did leave eggs, but I have gone back to dairy. So I also need to, again, become vegan. Because see on the right side, a vegan diet saves. Every single day you are a vegan, you save one animal's life, 4,000 liters of water, 20 kg of grain, and one, and how much? 10 kg of carbon dioxide. So, veganism is good for the planet. Um, have you thought that our feeding choices, so you are small now, but you can probably look at your sisters, elder brother, elder sisters. So, when they have little babies, how do they feed the babies? Do they breastfeed or do they give formula feed? So, when uh, I was small, I was breastfed and my brother was also breastfed. But when I was growing up, I saw more and more children were being formula fed and being given the bottle. So, uh, do you know that uh, just to produce one kg of that formula powder, you would see nano and all these things. In fact, when you go to a pharmacy shop, the first thing in the front of you that you see are series of formula powder bus. And uh, just to produce one kg of this, you need 4,000 liters of water to make one kg of formula powder. And how much? water do you need to produce one liter maybe the uh, five glasses of water that mother drinks right so it is not environment friendly so i am a gynecologist and since the last uh, five years or so my main work has shifted to promoting breastfeeding so i now work as a lactation consultant and 
this is the environmental impact that i share with mothers that when you choose think about this that you are going to give formula to your kid for one year then look at the environmental impact of it a uh, few more things i would like to show you that now my gifting choices have changed so earlier maybe we used to go to an archie shop get a get a nice card to gift on a birthday or go to a mall buy something and give but now what am i gifting these days so i'll just show a few things to you so look at this you can see gandhi ji's photograph so this is like a nice thing you can keep on your table and this you know how is this made this is made from flowers so uh, this gazipur landfill which i just showed you just near that there is an organization that's working what do they do they take all the flowers that are thrown from temples or just close this no uh, just thrown from from, from temples or uh, there is lot of flowers go waste so they collect it they take out the petals and look at this space this space has been made by petals these this these small small lines have been made by cutting petals so this is an organization called gul mehar that works with poor women and they make this stuff so this is what i gift now uh, let me show you something more so i gifted these uh, this is holy uh, in holy we play colors right so these are colors made out of beetroot beetroot and rose so this is what i gifted during holi this time and totally environment friendly uh these are bags made of jeans so the jeans that you wear and it becomes tight when you grow up so what do you do to that jeans you throw right so that jeans these people take and they make beautiful stuff out of it so you can see the bag on the screen so i have this bag also it is made out of jeans you can look at this purse it is made out of plastic so they take plastic bags that are thrown from homes so this plastic bags they cut into strips and they make such beautiful purses from it you can look at this this is a book cover book cover made out of plastic these are my gifts these days can you look at this this is a notebook made from recycled paper the paper that we throw so now you must be thinking now what is recycling and what is upcycling now recycling is uh, converting your waste into something usable but of a lesser level okay of a lesser level so new your newspaper is made up of recycled paper so you will see that the quality is not very good so it is recycled from paper that is thrown away from maybe industries or homes upcycling is upcycle so you convert your waste into a form that is better than the original form so this is upcycling you have upcycled plastic into something more useful okay uh, you can look at this this is a bookmark so beautiful it is made out of what waste cloth and then just one satin ribbon has been put there look at this this is uh, an upcycled pen stand it is made out of grass can you imagine this is wool and this is grass look at this so instead of buying a plastic uh, bowl for your fruits you put your fruits on your dining table or in your kitchen don't buy a plastic bowl because plastic does not degrade it can never be decomposed and most of the time you will not even give it to a recycler it probably will break and you'll just throw it in the dustbin and it will go to the landfill most of the time the stuff that can be recycled never reaches the recycler because you don't segregate it so the milk bags that can be recycled you don't give it to the recycler you just throw it in the dustbin and it lands up in the landfill so this is a nice basket made out of grass and also provides employment to a lot of women here look at this what is this this is a straw this is a steel straw so now when i go outside to drink juice 
I carry my own straw. I don't take plastic straws because plastic straws again is plastic. And now to actually I don't even use straw because I just take the coconut and drink directly. Look at uh, look at this. So how does your mother or the bai in your house? How does she walk wash the utensils? So uh, you must have seen Scotch Bright, right? The green colored Scotch Bright. So most of you must have either the Scotch Bright, uh, which is made of plastic, or the silver silver wire in your kitchen, which is used to scrub. So one is made of silver wire, not silver, but wire. One is made of plastic. Both of them are non-biodegradable. So why don't you switch to this? This is just like scotch bright. It is made of coconut coir, you know, the coconut that you throw and then that is taken and it's converted into this totally biodegradable. Why don't the, the clips that you use at your home are of plastic. This is made of bamboo, totally biodegradable. And you know why bamboo is good? Because bamboo takes just three weeks to become into a tree. It is the fastest growing tree on the planet. So if you use anything of bamboo, that's entirely sustainable for the planet. So this is what I use in my house, bamboo clips. Uh, what else can I show you? Okay, so look at this. So you use this for uh, cleaning your uh, utensils or maybe this. You know, these are detergents that we use. Have you, or you use Harpic in your toilet or you use some detergents for, you, for your floor. Have you ever thought the impact of these chemicals on your body or on the environment? Let's talk about the environment. If you just read the uh, label of Harpic, it is written hydrochloric acid, very strong, don't touch, it can be hazardous to you. Okay, it is hazardous to you. What is going to happen when you flush that Harpic solution down the drain, down the toilet, it is going to land into some lake or some ocean. You have not touched it, but now it has gone to the ocean and now it is going to touch some fish or some crab or some uh, maybe plant or weed there. So it has gone from your house, but it has spoiled the ocean. So we need to go away from, from this uh, chemical based detergents. So what you can do in the uh, meantime, you can make bioenzyme. So what is bioenzyme? Bioenzyme is just with the process of fermentation, uh, you can see on the left side, it has used uh, citrus peel. Citrus fruits are what? Lemon, mosambi, and orange. With the help of them, you can create this bioenzyme. This is what I just made last month. Okay. So you can use jaggery, you can use the citrus peels, and you can use water. In just one month, you get bioenzyme. So this bioenzyme is a highly concentrated uh, detergent but it is natural. So you can just use this for cleaning your platforms, cleaning your utensils, the floors, the toilets, and it is totally chemical free. So these are the little changes that you can make in your life. Okay, uh, in your, in your uh, refrigerator, when you store your vegetables and fruits, your mom must be just maybe storing it in the plastic itself, or she must be storing it in some, uh, some netted plastic pouch. So, can you use this? Uh, huh, just one sec. Yeah. Yeah. So, I was saying, uh, I was saying that you can take this. These are plus uh, made of cloth. You can make at home or you can buy. And you can store your vegetables in this. You can carry with yourself a cloth bag in your in your purse, and you can use this to carry vegetables and fruits home instead of taking plastic. And I would like to show this, which I really, really like. Okay, so this is a seed flag. So what is a seed flag? This is what I give now. Seed flag is. Uh, you can hear me. 
Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Great. So there are certain seeds impregnated into this. You can see little seeds here impregnated into this paper. So I gift a flag to my friends or whoever I need, and this flag can be planted or we grow into a plant. I give these the seeds with seeds at the end. So I give a children where they have used it, they can plant this much and it grows into a plant. And uh, there was a seed bomb also here. I don't know where it has gone. Doesn't matter. So these are little changes that you can make in your life. Now, these are not huge changes. Are they huge? Are they very difficult? No, right? So these are seed bombs. You can see in the, uh, in the left side. So this is just a seed surrounded by clay. And it can be gifted on birthdays or as return gifts or to your friends. So these are seed bombs. You can just throw them. Uh, in a in an area where there is plain land and it will grow into a tree and you can you can have the satisfaction that oh I have uh, uh, planted a tree so these are seed bombs you can see on the right side the bamboo brushes so our do you know I had read somewhere that uh, just uh, our plastic brushes are the second largest source of plastic pollution in oceans. Because where does the, uh, are we probably use the brush for maybe what, three to six months and throw it. What happens to that brush? Instead, can you get a bamboo brush? Totally recyclable. Yeah, so these are small changes that you can make in your life and uh, small changes with huge impact. I have started doing these things and uh, I think it has made my life much simpler and uh, with a lot of contentment that I am living a sustainable life. Uh, can you do all of this? Uh, you are in 10th standard, I've heard. So little children have the power of influencing parents because whenever ch children say something, parents are like, okay, we'll do it for you. So can you convert your house into a more sustainable house. I, I don't know whether your mother is going to actually make this bioenzyme and convert to this, but if you are insistent enough, why can't why can't you do why can't you make this? Uh, so use use the power of being children and change your house, change it into a more environmentally sustainable house. I'm going to share all the links of the organizations and the NGOs that can help you become more sustainable because you can't do this alone. You will need information. You will need support. So I'll send these links and uh, the uh, change the climate change people will send it to you. Now, what is this? So this is a book that I wrote you, which you can see on the screen. And this is the book that I wrote last year and it has just been published this year in January. So this is the book, first book of my life and uh, a dream of maybe last 10 years. I'm 36 years old. So when I was maybe 22 or 23, people used to tell me, Taru, you write very well and uh, maybe a book is going to come out of you one day and it has come out of me. So what is this book about? This book is about uh, something that I did in 2014. So between 2014 and 2016, those two years, uh, I I belong to Bombay, right? So born and brought up in Bombay, uh, big uh, big city and big buildings and a lot of luxuries. And when I was studying to become a doctor, uh, I used to go to remote areas to serve for a small time, maybe two weeks, because obviously I have my MBBS to do. And then I saw that the rural areas in our country really need our help. And it was my dream to finish my MD, which I did in obstetrics and gynecology. What is gynecology? Childbirth. Right? Take care of uh, mothers who want to deliver. So I wanted to serve mothers in rural areas. That was my dream. So the moment I finished my MD from Bombay, the first thing I did was I ran away from Bombay and I went to Bihar. So you would know about Bill Gates, Bill Gates, the richest man on the planet. So when he earned a lot of money and he was retiring, maybe 60 years old, he felt that I've earned a lot of money. Now I should contribute. 
I should give something back to the society that has given me so much money. So he came to the underdeveloped countries of the world, like Africa or India, and he said that I want to help. I have a lot of money. Tell me where you want me to put the money. When he came to India in 2009, he went to the government of India and said, I have money. Tell me how I can help you. So they sent him to Bihar. So uh, Bihar is a state very poor in infrastructure and very poor uh, health uh, parameters. So he came to Bihar and he saw that the condition of mothers and children was very poor in villages and in hospitals. The hospitals also were very poor. So he started a project there where he called doctors from other parts of the country to train the doctors in Bihar or to help transform the villages. So as a part of that project, I went to Bihar from Bombay to Bihar in 2014 and I stayed there till 2016, two years. So those two years, the journey was just so fascinating and something that I could never have imagined. And uh, the best time of my life, I would say if uh, one, the last moments of your life, you know, it is said that the whole life just runs through in front of you. So those two years are going to be those moments in the last moments that I'm going to see because I don't think I'm ever going to forget it. That was the time that I had gone to serve, to contribute, give back to the society which had given me so much. Even when I'm getting educated in government medical colleges or government schools, I hardly have to give any fees because everything is subsidized by the government. I have to give back. But most of the doctors immediately think of setting up a private practice or joining a corporate hospital or doing going abroad. I thought, no, I have to first give back. Everybody tells us, oh, get settled first. These things can be done later. You first have children. You first have a bank balance. You should first have a house. But I said, no, that can wait. I want to give back first. So I went to Bihar and I lived there with a lot of uh, uh, with villagers and you can see these photographs that I have put in the presentation so th this is a village meeting I see you can look at me I'm here uh, I'm here this is me in the blue dress and this is Nivedita she came from uh, Mangalore she was a nurse so both of us are sitting here and we are conducting a meeting <laughs> a village meeting with so many villagers and we are talking about the issue of malnutrition. Malnutrition means even though they are farmers, they do not have nutritious food to eat because they just sell everything. They, whatever rice or whatever they grow, they just sell everything for money. So their children in turn do not have much to eat even though they are farmers. It was so sad for me that these farmers are serving me. Farmers of UP, Bihar, Punjab, Haryana, they are serving us. But their children are malnourished. So I started a, uh, a project, community farming, in which even though I was a doctor, I was a gynecologist, I, every morning before my OPD, I used to go to the, uh, to the uh, fields and do farming with them and grow fruits and vegetables so that their children can come out of malnutrition. Uh, another issue there was uh, lack of hygiene. People would not wash hands. People would just defecate in the open. There were no toilets. So this is what I made. Uh, this is called as, I don't know whether you've heard of this. This is uh, inspired by the Tippy Tap project in Africa. Tippy Tap. So uh, I have used very basic things to make a wash basin. So you can see this lady's washing hand just outside my OPD. So uh, I have just used few bamboos, um, a life boy soap, an old can, and few pull the concept of pulleys to make a wash basin. So this can be made at anyone's home. And these days, due to COVID, this becomes all the more important. You know, wash basin is a concept of only cities. Rural areas don't have wash basins. So this can really help in rural areas. You can search this uh, tippy tap or you can search nirmal nirmal so tippy tap was also uh, uh, this uh, duplicated in india i'm sorry duplicated in india by dr pavan and he called it nirmal 
and many villages in Maharashtra now have Nirmal. So you can search this online and make this in your home. It's very simple. So for malnutrition, you can look at this little kid. So this difference, you can see the left and the right kid is the same. Difference is just in six days. So we used to take care of malnourished kids. And uh, in just six days, this is what the kid became. And look at this kid on the left side. This kid, when, he came, when she came to us, she was five years old with the weight of a five-month-old kid. Uh, kid. Five-year-old kid with the weight of a five-month-old kid had never walked in her life and was all the time lying down because she had no energy, a lot of bones sticking out like as if someone, some kid from Somalia or Africa. We took care of her and this is what she became on the right side. This is what she became in just three months. And can anything match the satisfaction of this change or this change that we could bring about in Bihar? No amount of money can match this. And I was so glad that immediately after passing out, my, after completing my education, I went to Bihar and I gave my two years of service of giving back to the society, giving back to my country for what it had given me. And now, uh, 2016, I came back, right? Now I'm living my own, own life. Now I'm not uh, there in Bihar because I'm ill, so I had to come back. So it's okay. You don't have to live your whole life in rural areas. Can you give one year? So now you're small. You're, you're in 10 standard. So you still have to figure out which branch first of all which branch you want to work in so one of the questions that you should think is in which field i want to contribute to my country which field i'm good at so when i was in 10th standard and i had to think what i should do in life uh, in 11th and 12th my granny my uh, grandmother she became ill and she was bedridden she was paralyzed so it was my I was smallest in the house. It was my job to, to you know, take care of her. So my elder brother is a doctor. So he taught me how to give food from the pipe in the nose. How to put a uh, a tube for her uh, to for her to pass urine. And she, he taught me. She used to get bed sores because she was on the bed all the time. So she was getting sores all over her back. So it was my job to take care of the sores. And I used to do daily dressings in 11th standard. So that's when I realized that I'm very good at taking care of people and I like to take care of people. So I will become a good doctor or I will become a good nurse. This is what I thought. So I had thought about how I will be able to contribute to the world. So I'm going to end the presentation now. So enough. <laughs> so I will just leave you with one thing. Um, one of my mentors is Dr. Abhay Bang. He is a follower of Gandhiji and he is a doctor who has spent 25 to 30 years of his life in a remote tribal area in Gadchiroli in Maharashtra. So he once told me, when I told him, Ki how to decide where to work, in which field to work, how do we decide that? And he said, uh, Vinoba Bhave was also his mentor. So he said, Vinoba Bhave always used to say, that your work is decided by two things. The first thing is called as Swabhava and the second thing is called as Swadharma. So what is Swabhava? Swabhava is your nature. Your nature. What are you good at? So my nature was I was good at biology because I was good at looking at nature and those kind of things. I was not at all good at maths. Whereas somebody else may be good at maths and physics and he likes maybe to, to become an engineer or a scientist. So what is your Swabhava? You first have to understand that. And the second thing is Swadharma. What is Dharma, you know? Dharma is duty. Uh, Swadharma, what is my duty? What is the duty of our generation at this time? So maybe in 1930 or 1940, the Swadharma of people was to fight for freedom because that was the greatest issue in India at that point of time. But today, fighting for freedom is not our Swadharma because we are already free. So what is our Swadharma today? 
so it could be many things what few things i think of are terrorism fighting terrorism so can you do something to fight terrorism uh, second thing would be environmental change climate change is the second swadharma of our generation which probably our grandparents would, did not have that much of an issue because this global uh, this climate issue has only happened in the last 50 60 years the acute problem so second swadharma will be environmental change third swadharma will be serving rural areas which was my swadharma serving mothers and children in rural areas is my swadharma so he told ki when your swadharma and your swabhav they match then the point where they intersect is what you have to do in your life it is your destiny it is your purpose in life so my swabhav was i wanted to be a doctor i want to serve and my swadharm was serving mothers and children in rural areas so these things intersected in bihar and that is why i could do so well there and that is why this book has come out if i would have ended up working in some corporate i would not have done my best we do our best when our swabhav and our swadharm both match so what is your swabhav that is the first thing that you have to think of so once your swabhav is ready then think of the swadharm of today what is today's generation what is the greatest demand of this country on you and what can you serve and when these things come together then that's your purpose so i'll just leave you with this last quote the best moments in our lives are not the passive and relaxing times the best moments are when your mind or your body is stretched to its limits in an effort to accomplish something difficult and worthwhile amazing quote i love this quote because uh, enjoy so my husband had told me that you can spend your life either in enjoyment or you can spend your life in creating something choose how you want to spend your life you want to enjoy through your life okay fine or you want to create something in life for somebody else you have to decide that so these are my last words to you you can stay in touch with me on facebook my name is taru sneh jindal um, or instagram and i'll send all the links to you thanks a lot for attending thanks a lot thank you so much ma'am for that wonderful full presentation web i am 100% sure that these young minds have been ignited and they would do their bit in conserving nature making this world a place to live in because of course brains are going to be in their hands now ma'am we have questions from these kids and i am say they are really nice and uh, lovely questions can i just look at all of them can i just have can i look at all of them look at all of them uh sure ma'am guys i'm going to the guys on your video cameras yeah great so how do i um, how many are there 158 yes ma'am so how do uh, ek minute i have to exit this speaker view na hmm no ma'am you uh, you just have to be there and uh, you will be able to speak while uh, even check would be telling the questions and uh, then you would be able to answer just, uh, 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 ma'am to see everyone you just have to uh, click on the lower uh, right there will be a small box and you would be able to see a lot of people and there is one I great view also uh, i could see you and two three more that's all i'm seeing okay um one second yeah, one second just, Mm-hmm. Uh, participants. Mm, okay, I'm not able to see. Ah, uh, ma'am, you have to just ah uh, scroll the ah uh, videos wherever you can see the three people or the four people. You ah, uh, if you scroll them, you will be able to see all of them. Okay, one second. Does that work? One 
Ma'am, you can Any stop case, the screen sharing. What you now. can do is, what you can do is, you can start shooting the questions first. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma ma uh, if you could uh, stop the screen sharing, then your video will become better, and maybe you would be able to see the other kids as well. So I have to stop the share. Yes, ma'am. The screen sharing. Okay, okay, ma'am. Uh, so ma'am, wherever yes, you can see. The share. Yes, ma'am. Now you will see a very small box where probably you can see us, like any one of us, uh, one of us. You yeah. have to just scroll that, like maybe right or left, and you will see a stream of uh, videos coming. Very good. I could see everyone. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so ma'am, we will start with the questions. Yes, please. Yes, ma'am. So we had many, many questions from many children, and they were really nice ones. So uh, the first question is. Why can't we engineer plastic in such a way that the bonds are easily broken and it becomes biodegradable? Yeah, so they are trying, right? So they are trying to make bioplastics. So bioplastic is a kind of plastic that uh, some scientists have made, which probably degrades faster. But the whole concept is this: that do we want to uh, continue with the use and throw? Uh, mentality use it throw it use it throw it right uh, have you not like i i remember when i was smaller my how my mother used to do things in the kitchen uh, we never bought a scrubber for the utensils never there was never a scrubber in the home you know how she used to wash utensils so little soap uh, whenever we use uh, soap for hand wash so whenever little bit used to get left now we throw it so she used to collect all of them and she used to put it inside an old socks socks uh, which <laughs> has got torn or something holes in the socks so she used to put it in the socks and then she used to tie it and put it in the kitchen and that was used to wash the utensils look at the look at the engineering of this lady uh, how she utilized the soap and also utilized the um socks so is use and throw the mentality you be want to continue with because use and throw is going to create that landfill even if you create a bioplastic even if you create a plastic that does not degrade takes does not take 500 years maybe take 7 years to degrade okay but 7 years it is still going to there be there in the landfill can you not can you not use a a cloth bag or can you not use a cloth in your can you keep can you not keep a cloth bag in your uh, bag or can you not use the coconut fiber why use plastic at all okay some next question is how does being vegan save land carbon dioxide emissions and grains yeah so uh, it is said that uh, the greatest carbon dioxide emissions in the world are not because of automobiles or trains or cars you know how carbon dioxide emissions maximize in the world it's because of animal agriculture what is animal agriculture growing animals or uh, livestock you know livestock lots of lots of cattle and lots and lots of hens and chickens they are reared in these huge grasslands for right. milk for meat and you know related products eggs and dairy so this is animal agriculture and they are only grown for our consumption so the amount of carbon dioxide that is released from animal agriculture is the most in the world read it anywhere so it is said that when we become vegans we do not use animals for our food or our maybe clothes or like silk or honey so the carbon dioxide emissions decrease and veganism is good for the planet this is what even who has said So it is proven veganism saves the environment. Right, ma'am. Then we have one question: that plastic is known to be the cheapest of all, and in a country like India, which is poverty-stricken, how can we invest on biodegradable things? 
yeah so uh, for example look at this pad so this one pad is uh, what how much it's i think 160 rupees so when you think of, oh my god 160 rupees for one pad but this is going to last you three years and the plastic pad one pad may be two rupees or two and a half rupees right but but you have to buy it every single time your packet gets over and you are dumping the landfill you are dumping the environment and this 160 rupees is going to stay with you for three years and in that case maybe 70 rupees per month plastic pads so if you do the math of it this is still cheaper instead of using this this cost me how much this is a uh, made out of grass so there is some noise coming can you mute everyone uh, everyone please mute yourselves yeah so this cost me like what 400 rupees okay so you would say ha huh, the plastic one is yeah, plastic but but the cost is not just to you look at the cost to the environment what is the cost to the environment of that plastic bowl and the cost of the environment for this. So I probably had to shell out some more money for this than the plastic. But I would rather pay more and take this than take the plastic because I'm always taking into account the cost to the environment. Are you taking into account the cost to the environment or are you just thinking of cost to your own wallet? We have to think of environment as our relative as our parent, as our mother who has, we say mother nature, right? Mother nature, we will always take care of mother nature. So I am gathered by this and plastic. I will not think of money in this. Yes, go next. Next. Uh, check. Um, I'm not sure what's wrong. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. go ahead with the questions. Okay, okay. So, uh, ma'am, the next question is, what degrades faster, cloth or paper and why? Okay, so as I said, uh, my, <laughs> my chemistry, physics and maths was very poor. Uh, I could only do biology and that is why I became a doctor. So you are asking me all physics and chemistry questions. But, okay, so you ask me cloth degrades first or paper degrades first. So I think paper, of course paper, cloth would, this cotton cloth will take a longer time to degrade. There is no question about it. But cloth will stay with you for a longer time. It is fully decompostable and it will stay, it won't tear, it will just be there for you, bear with you for a longer time. Paper, how long does it stay? It will just get torn and you're done with it. So we have to use things that will stay with us for a longer time. That's the that's the whole deal here. Right. Then ma'am, uh, another question is, can upcycled plastic be made from home? From? Can upcycled plastic be made from home? Yes, so can upcycling be done at home? I think that's yes. the question. So of yes. course you can do it at home. So you don't have to keep going to NGOs to buy upcycled things. So your mothers and your grandmothers were experts at upcycling things at home. So one of the ways my mother used to upcycle thing was when my frocks, when I was small, my frocks, you know, when they used to tear or become old, she used to cut the frock and then she used to put a thread and then it used to become uh, something that she, like an apron, she used to wear it along, around her tummy in the kitchen. We don't have to buy an apron to wear in the kitchen, right? So she used to make the aprons from uh, my frocks or my kurtas. So upcycling definitely can be done at home. The reason why I mentioned these organizations was upcycling or recycling businesses also employ a lot of poor men and women right so 
in addition to upcycling and recycling you are also providing employment to them so now your children but when you grow up and when you start earning money your every 10 rupees is a vote just remember that it's a vote to what you support so if i have to spend 100 rupees will i give 100 rupees to a plastic bowl or will i give 100 rupees to this which not only saves the environment but also provides employment to an old woman in some remote village in punjab right every single rupee is a vote Okay, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, another question is: Why do microgreens have more nutrients and vitamins than the normal greens? These are microgreens, right? So it is said that uh, once, so the concept is the same. Why do your parents have told you sprouts are very good, right? So sprouts have a lot of nutrition, lot of nutrition. Why sprouts have nutrition? Because once the seeds are germinating and microgreen is the is the is the stage till two leaves have come so these are microgreens so in this stage the plant has a lot of uh, vitamins and minerals inside it the moment leaves have come out like after two leaves more leaves are coming out then all the energy of the plant grows in goes in photosynthesis making more and more leaves and the energy in the plant uh, is utilized for that so you will not get and i don't know whether i'm explaining it properly to you but the concept is that till the time microgreen stage is there till that time vitamins and minerals are more because the entire energy of the plant is is still latent in it you know it's just there not it has not got invested in any other thing the moment leaves start to come out and branches start to come out the entire vitamins and minerals will go to growing the plant okay right now plant has not grown so when you consume microgreens you will get much more nutrition than you uh, get from adult plants i hope i have said that right okay ma'am then uh, like you very clearly talked about using metal straws instead of plastic straws so one of the children i have doubt that which will degrade faster will the metal straw degrade faster than the plastic straw and how will that happen so this will not degrade at all i think <laughs> i don't think this degrades but i will just use one metal straw in my whole life but if i use plastic every single time i drink nalpani or i drink a juice or i drink a lassi or buttermilk i will keep taking or fruity or any drink coke or something i'll keep taking hundreds and hundreds of straws in my whole life and keep dumping that you do you know these straws are so notorious they will go to the ocean and they will get stuck in the eyes of some fish or nose of some crab or some ears of some so uh, recently uh, this was posted a video was posted on facebook that a uh, uh, this one plastic bottle got stuck in some head of some tortoise and the tortoise could not swim because of that and he will die so a lot of these small small things that we use na they get ultimately make the way to the ocean and they get stuck into all these things of the animals so even though this is not going to get degraded this can get recycled very easily it can get melted and it can get recycled so i, I will just use one of this where i I'll, i'll use hundreds and hundreds of uh, plastic straws i'll not throw this right okay <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Ma then there was another question which talked about looking at the supply chain margins of the industries, like the industries you were talking about, which produce biodegradable material. So we do have to look at the supply chain margins because it is basically about demand and supply. So if people won't have the demand, there won't be any supply. So how do we tackle that? Of course. So uh, only when the demand demand is created, uh, organizations will have the courage to start working on such issues if we do not demand for 
more degradable things then the and uh, then the industry will just keep making all the plastic nonsense these case some ngos are working on this these important issues of biodegradable this and that and maybe this upcycled plastic but if you don't go ahead and buy this will they survive beyond two years what will happen we tried but nobody is buying so let us just stop stop this organization so they will stop this organization and they will again start making plastic purses or leather purses right so only when you all give your vote to biodegradable compostable environment friendly products only then these organizations will have the courage to go on only when i buy this as a gift as a birthday gift for someone that this organization will continue to upcycle flowers yes so demand has to be there okay so ma'am this next question is on one of the research projects i did it is about e waste management so the person asks about how will we tackle e waste along with medical waste like you syringes and scalpels and blades and everything along with the e waste how do we deal with this are you asking that yes ma'am right so uh, now the most important thing that you can do in your house is waste segregation right so you can have two dust bins in your kitchen so you can tell your mom throw all the kitchen waste which was once alive because she'll get confused with dry and wet so you can say which was once alive you can put in one dust bin and that will be composted with very nice home composters you can easily learn it online daily dump is one such organization in bangalore the second dust bin has all the other material which can be recycled So that is given to your kachra wala who comes every morning because he is going to separate all of that. He will give paper to one uh, industry, uh, the newspapers to somebody else, plastic to somebody else. So he will help in recycling. Now all the batteries, all the old phones, so all these things that you have in your house, laptops. So the e-waste. you can collect inside one cardboard box you can just make label e waste and in one years collection you can give it to e waste recycler so there are proper e waste recyclers in every city just google it who is in your city they will actually come to your home and buy it from you so one i know is kabadiwala.com so kabadiwala.com is an actual site they i don't know where it works which of cities delhi definitely works mm-hmm. so they will come to your house and buy the e waste from you and they will then recycle the batteries and you know which is not good for the environment they will recycle it and use it again the next is bio uh, biomedical waste so biomedical waste is swabs syringes needles you know have been pricked once so they are blood stained or uh, it could be bandages it could be uh, you know do you know that your sanitary pads which you throw are also biomedical waste because they have blood right so imagine a person who has hiv or hepatitis c if she throws her pad in the open imagine that so ideally pads cannot be thrown with household waste it has to be uh, Separately disposed as by medical people. And if you are throwing a plastic pad, put it in paper and make a large red dot over it, so that your kachra wala knows this is a sanitary pad, and he will not just touch it with his hand. Imagine there is a person with HIV. She has just thrown the blood pad, and that kachra wala touches his hand, and there is a cut in his hand. Okay. So. Biomedical waste you can collect in a separate cardboard or plastic dabba so that nobody gets pricked with it. So plastic is the best, but big dabba, right? Biomedical waste. Collect all the biomedical waste maybe of three months, and then go to your nearest or nearest district hospital or peripheral health center in your area and tell them. Anyways, they have heaps and heaps of biomedical waste to throw, so they will easily take yours. Okay, so biomedical waste can go there. E-waste can go to the e-waste recycler. The 
plastic waste or the dry waste can go to the kachrawala and your organic waste can be composted you will become zero waste zero waste zero waste lifestyle yes ma'am that's great so we as medicos we are learning about it in a lot of detail about waste management and everything so all you guys who ever is going to be taking up medicine soon you will learn about it all all right don't worry so uh, ma'am now we have a very pertinent question is how do we compost like how do we make compost do we use raw peels do we use cooked peels yeah. how do we do it so the concept is uh, your whatever peels that you generate in your house so that has to be imagine you are not buying your compost you are making the compost in your house so you can just take a matka you know you know matka you can go out and buy a matka from the road make some few holes so that air can go inside air will cause uh, helping it's called as aerobic Uh, degrade or uh, decomposition. We are doing it aerobic, aerobic process, not anaerobic. So aerobic needs air. So put, make some holes. Tell him only to make the holes. Put your kachra in it. Add equal amount of dry waste you have put. So dry. So this is this will have nitrogen. So you have to put a waste uh, that has carbon. So what will you put? to neutralize this so you can put anything that is dry you can put shredded paper newspaper or you can put dry leaves so you just go out now all the leaves are being shared by the trees just collect all of that make some chur of it and just put it in your composter so one part of your kitchen waste and one part of dry waste so dry can be coco peat coco peat is something that you can buy from the market coco peat means the uh, Uh, the coconut fiber has been just shredded very small this is just cut very small so that can be used as the dry waste newspaper shredded newspaper dry leaves these are all dry waste so one is to one ratio just keep carrying it in your pot wet waste dry waste wet waste dry waste so your pot will get filled with that just keep mixing it air is coming inside automatically the bacteria will start acting within 6 to 8 uh, weeks your compost will be ready so uh, don't okay. just listen to me and start doing it i will send you videos uh, you can follow vani murthy vani murthy is called the worm rani because she has started the composting movement so you can follow worm uh, vani murthy on facebook and instagram i will also send her videos to you so sure. uh, harish kumar has a question he has been raising and time harish please type your question in the chat box till then ma'am there was this one question which even i feel that you should really on- answer that in this lockdown time how do we do something what do we do and how do we do it so that we can contribute yes. and do something yes as so, students uh, when uh, during the lockdown i was also uh, actually for me lockdown wasn't different because i am in lockdown since 4 years uh, i have a brain tumor and uh, i am undergoing chemotherapy so since 4 years i've been in this illness so i'm anyways in lockdown so it's been difficult but yes so everyone is at home now and i know it will be very difficult for you others if you are growing age you can't go out to play you can't meet your friends Very difficult. You can't go out and play cricket. Or, so difficult. So uh, you can uh, and studies. You can keep studying all the time, even if it's ten standards. So I think for me, lockdown has been the best time of the last four years because in lockdown, I could do so many things that otherwise I could not do. There is no distraction. I <laughs> there are no movies to see. I cannot go out. Uh, I cannot go eat at some hotel. I am just in my house. So I did so many things I wanted to do since a long time. The first thing was starting to compost. So a lot of time goes in composting because then you have to monitor your mother. <laughs> you have to monitor your mother. She is segregating the waste. Take all the waste. Book the composter. Do the thing every day. I I spend a lot of time in kitchen gardening, uh, so trying to make my my own life more and more sustainable. I did composting, I did kitchen gardening. Uh, what else did I do? Uh, I did a lot of webinars. 
uh, online webinars like did you all i did it on breastfeeding also so trying to impart knowledge and trying to share information with other people so uh, I, can you start composting? Can you start a kitchen garden? Can you grow something at all in your house? So little things you can do, right? So this is my suggestion to you. That will make your time more meaningful. Okay, ma'am. So uh, we have the last two questions, and then uh, you are free, and everybody is free. So uh, the last questions are, ma'am. First is that. Don't you think that improving the economic health and education of people would itself have on these issues? So we should make those issues as our priority. So you're saying which issues? Economic issues and? Economic issues and the social issues which should be uh, taken into account and the educational issues. Yeah. So, so do you think environment is disconnected from any of this? So one, it, uh, it is it, it has been postulated that COVID has happened because of impact of human beings on the environment. Okay, this is what everyone is saying, and we have to stop uh, the wildlife trade that was happening in China. So even though uh, this is about the environment, and we should do more important things, but this environmental impact has led to economic impact, has led to health impact, has led to impact on education. You cannot go to school. People have lost their jobs. So ultimately, it is the environment that has impacted everything else. You cannot say that, no, 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 environment is not important. We should do more important things like health and education and, and uh, economy. But realize that you're living on earth, you're living on this planet. Environment is the part and parcel of every single choice that you make. Every single choice is going to impact the environment and that is going to impact everything else. So you cannot disconnect the environment with other things. Now you're sit sitting at home, you can't go to school, people cannot go to work, people cannot go to hospitals because of this, because of the environment. Right. Okay, ma'am, so we have the last question for the day. And that question is, do you think thermal death can be prevented or prolonged by waste management? And does waste management decrease the entropy of the environment? Oh, what is entropy? I don't know what is entropy. I have forgotten entropy. I read this, I think, in the third grade. <laughs> and yeah, ma'am, you were 10th is and first was th thermal death yeah what is thermal death i don't know <laughs> so these are very complicated technical questions that uh, i i can't answer i'm really sorry <laughs> oh, ma'am not a problem well yes, Enoch, okay, your question can be taken up on the group do not worry so uh, ma'am the question can i have a picture with yeah. everyone if everyone yes, can switch on the cameras Yes, ma'am. Why everybody not, ma'am? Switch on your videos and smile, and we'll have a nice group picture with everybody. Okay, everybody, switch on your videos and smile. So, can you please give us a feedback of how you felt about the presentation today? Yes, ma'am. We have a yes, post webinar for people will fill. And, uh, ma'am, okay. there will be some questions also for that. Yeah. What? 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 There will be questions. Uh, Mom, we we do have a feedback form uh, wherein uh, we have uh, all the questions. Take in the picture. I'll send it. Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, ma'am. Ma thank you, ma'am. So, ma'am, on behalf of everybody, I would like to thank you. Uh, you know, thank you from the core of my heart for taking up time and taking out time from your very very busy schedule and doing this for all of us for the 10th for the college kids everybody and you are really truly an inspiration and you've taught us to lead the way in the right manner and do something for the environment and i really really hope that this session would be catalytic for all the people who have attended it and of course like the people are saying we would love to have many many webinars with you thank you so thanks much thanks a lot chehek for giving me this chance and for arranging this i know a lot of people here are from moga right 
So uh, I think Faridkot is near Moga. So this is made by uh, women near in Faridkot uh, with an organization called as Kheti Virasat Mission. And the rest from Tamil Nadu. Thanks a lot for joining and listening to me, giving me your two hours. Thanks a lot. Stay in touch on Facebook. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah. Bye. Yes, ma'am. And uh, ma'am, there were some questions regarding about uh, how things were to be made. So I think the links that you will share with us, we will further share them. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was Bye. very inspiring, and everyone was very Bye. happy. There had been very uh, good comments also about you in the chat box. So everyone was really happy about the whole thing. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you.